A Stuart Models beam engine rebuild, part 11, commencing reassembly. And reassembly starts with the column. Before bolting the column in place, I have some work to do on it, so I'll just leave it stood there for a while. First of all, I'm cleaning these parts. And this is what the Watts Parallel Motion attaches to. I believe that the correct name for these parts is the entablature. On this model, the entablature is in two halves. On some models, it's one complete casting. I'm cleaning it up with a piece of Scotch-Brite. Scotch-Brite is a really good material to use in the workshop. It's not as scratchy as sandpaper. It's a bit like a kitchen scouring pad on steroids. I thought it might be nice to attach this to the column using some 2BA stainless steel bolts that I have in a box of 2BA bolts. And to find the stainless steel ones, I'm using a magnet. If the magnet picks up the bolts, it's not stainless steel. And I thank all the viewers who wrote in to tell me about stainless steel and its magnetic or non-magnetic properties. In this clip I'm fitting the bolts. And looking at it, the problem really is that these bolts are far too big, and they're very ugly and look out of place. Very much like a girlfriend I remember from many, many years ago. Also, the holes are very shallow, and the threads in the main column are stripped. I'm going to have to do something about this. I don't like bodging anything. I could just fit the bolt with some Loctite, but that's not the answer. The answer is to drill the hole a lot deeper and re-thread the hole a lot deeper. Then all I have to do is use some 2BA bolts with a smaller head and a much longer shaft. It's worth mentioning that before fitting the entablature to the column, I need to make sure it's the right way around. Ah, that's better. This is definitely the way it fits. The 2BA bolts with the larger head now actually fit, but they're only really engaging a couple of proper threads. I need some longer bolts, so I'm going to look in my drawer of much longer, smaller head size 2BA bolts. And here's one I prepared earlier. One of the holes in the column wasn't a perfect 90 degrees into the column. What I'm doing here is re-tapping it using the entablature as a guide to keep it very square. Because no matter what I did when I re-threaded the hole that I drilled deeper, it would not go in at the right angle. But it's okay now. And with the one size smaller 2BA bolt heads in place, I do think it looks a lot better. Who knows, I may use 2BA bolts with this size head to mount the bearings. But for now, it's time to mount the column, and I'm going to use some washers just to demonstrate how horrible they look. It's a matter of personal taste, and this is my opinion. I do not like using washers for mounting things like columns onto the bed plate. I don't like the look of these washers anyway, they're too big. Unfortunately, I don't have any 2BA washers that are smaller than this. I suppose I could make some, but really I just like the effect of a nut directly against the paint. Because I used etching primer, the paint is well stuck to the etching primer, and the etching primer in turn is very well bonded to the metal. I'm sure lots of viewers with no content on their own YouTube channel will write in and tell me how to do the job. Yes, the nut's going to mark the paint, but the marks around the nut in the top left of this image were made by the washer. Once these bolts are covered in oil, which there will be to stop them rusting, everything will look fine. In these highly magnified images, every discrepancy, every tiny little mark and fingerprint shows up. But when I look at the parts, without using a camera, they look fine. The time has come to mount the two bearing blocks, which will hold the cross shaft, which in turn holds the linkage that moves the slide valve. I'm using some wet or dry sandpaper on these because they are fairly badly marked. This is the main valve linkage, and as you can see, it's a bit grubby and needs cleaning up. I didn't go mad with the wet or dry sandpaper, it just cleaned up the parts. You can still see some of the machining marks, but this isn't an issue. I didn't want to remove too much metal off one side because the bolts would not have been central in the holes. With the bolts in position, it's time to fit the shaft. And you will notice that I am not using any lubrication. There's a reason for this, I'll explain it in a future video. This is my small box of very small allen keys, and I'm going to select an allen key to disassemble the linkage, and here I'm cleaning up first the shaft, followed by cleaning up the other parts of the linkage. Here's a magnified view of this particular part, and as you can see, it's held in place to the main shaft with a grub screw, which is not a brilliant idea, but that's how the part was manufactured. The part that I'm cleaning now using some Scotch-Brite is the cross shaft, and when this is all in place with the rest of the linkage, it will operate the slide valve inside the steam chest. 
As I always say, my videos are designed to help beginners, and because of that I would like to explain in detail how these parts fit. The rod is attached to the small fitting, not using a bolt, but a special small pin. And in this clip, although I have the valve rod arm at the correct side, the part is the wrong way round. This is the way it's designed to fit. The nut is to the outside, so the very flat head of the pin doesn't foul the valve chest as this part goes up and down. Turning the engine around, it's a simple job to fit the other bearing at the other side. You will notice that this part of the shaft is a lot longer. It needs to be like this because the shaft is rotated by a fitting which is connected to the eccentric rod on the main engine crankshaft. And when everything's finished together and working, that is how the engine will control the valve events. It's very important that this cross shaft cannot move from side to side because it would not be good if it fouled the steam chest. So by adjusting the position of the fittings on the shaft to allow no side movement whatsoever, everything is going to be fine. The crossbar that fits through the valve spindle is just held in place with a couple of nuts. I tried it with washers in between, but it looked wrong. The crossbar will be held in place with the 5BA nuts. And it must not be tight. Everything must move very freely, as you can see here. This feels OK. Here's a quick shot of the eccentric. This will operate the valve. Now for something completely different, it's time to paint the outer column which supports the crankshaft bearing. I'm using the same black paint that I used when I painted the main base, and this is HMG Gloss Black. It's an enamel paint, but it's in a spray can. And here is the aforementioned spray can. HMG paints, very good stuff. A very quick shot of the paint drying, and then it's over to painting the top of the column while I was working on the column, I noticed that the paint that I initially applied to this column, the etching primer, had attacked the paint underneath. So what I did was, I rubbed it down with some wet or dry sandpaper, and in this clip, using some Phoenix Precision Paints, Great Western Railway Green, I'm repainting the top part. And that's about it for this video. To any confused viewers out there, I'd just like to mention that I am voicing over and editing this video on Christmas Eve 2019. This video will appear on YouTube on December the 24th, 2019, and I would like to wish all of my kind Patreon supporters a very Merry Christmas and a happy, healthy and prosperous 2020. And if you don't celebrate Christmas because I am aware that these videos are global, please omit the bit about Merry Christmas, but I still wish you a Happy New Year for 2020. This video will not appear on the public YouTube for a while, so if you're not one of my Patreon supporters, you won't see this till next year anyway. Here's a belated Happy New Year to everyone who's not a Patreon supporter. Happy New Year, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.